Hello, hello. All right. Listen, if I'd have known that that lady was going to be first before me, I don't know if I'd have shown up today. <laughs> no, I love her, by the way. And um, if you heard this video here, it talks about a mentor. Well, actually, that lady over there, I signed up in her mentor uh, class that she didn't host. Um, <laughs> I've sat in front of her numerous times, and I'm grateful for you, Pastor Yolanda. You know I love you. All right, guys. So we're talking about purpose, but we're about to head into how are you going to get to your purpose if you don't have someone helping you, right? Because if you think you're going to go rogue and get very far, you'll get far, but you may get far in a ditch, Right? We need somebody to lead us forward, and we need somebody to lead us well, all right? So I'm going to open up the scripture because disclaimer is I'm Marlena Hollis, preacher and teacher of all things Jesus. And, and let me, I'm just going to throw this out there. If you um, are available on January 29th, it's, it will be 8.30 a.m. your time. I am going to be hosting a new program on the Now Television Network which is called the Marlena Teach Jesus Program. So, please download the app. I would love for you to, or check out Roku TV, and it is called the Now um, Television Network, and I hope that that program, I believe it will, bless you. All right? So, let's go ahead. I'm going to dig into the Word because the Word is our guide, right? It, it, it's, it's what we need to survive, to lead, to do. And I'm a real storyteller as I start um, teaching this out. Uh, as you said, as I said in the thing, we need a covering. So I want you to do me a favor, and I want you to look at your neighbor, and I want you to tell them, say, get covered. Get covered. Get covered. All right. So I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story because it's a long story in the Bible, but I'm going to hit a few of the high notes, and I'm going to catch up with it in the middle of, of my colorful story is it all right if I do a little bit between the, the black letters? All right, okay. All right, well, let's go to 1 Kings chapter 19. All right, 1 Kings chapter 19. I'm going to try not to use my readers. I've graduated um, to readers on top of contacts. <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel. <sighs> my gosh. And, and I'm actually mad about it. I just want to say that. I'm mad about it. Okay, yeah, I've got some kindred spirits in the room. Yeah, all right, I'm so mad about it. Uh, but anyway, like I need something else to take care of, you know, right, like to keep up with. I can't keep up with myself, much less a set of readers. All right, so 1 Kings chapter uh, 19, what did I say? Y'all hearing me? 19. Good, we got some people in the room listening. I know who that is. That's my sister, Charlene, over there, who helps me in ministry. I love her. We partner. Ebony and Ivory. That's right. Y'all figure out who's who? <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, I've got to get serious because I like to have a lot of fun, and that is a good thing. Right? Because sometimes we can take ourselves way too serious. We can be way, way, way too deep. And sometimes we just need to come to the shallow end and splash around a little bit and have some fun. Right? So let, let's do that. But then in the middle of the fun, let's, let's learn something good today. Because we are amplifying, but in order to amplify, you've got to go high. Right? You see those? I think there's some mountain peaks. You see those vague distinction? That's because mountaintops have a great view and the perspective is a whole lot different than in the valley. In the valley, there's a lot of growth. That's where the green things are, right? You don't see a lot of green on top of the mountain when it's real high. But you see the perspective shift, and you can see where you came from, right? So we're going to talk about today, I want to tell you about a story about Elijah and Elisha. So in verse 19, we're going to start there in chapter 19. It says, so he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him, and he was with the 12th. Then Elijah passed by him 
and he threw his mantle on him, and he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, please let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. So Elisha turned back from him and took a yoke of oxen, and he slaughtered them and boiled their flesh using the oxen's equipment and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he arose, and he followed Elijah, and he became his servant. So here's the story. Elijah the prophet was the, the big guy in town. When they knew Elijah was coming into town, everybody was preparing. They're like, is he going to stay at my house? Is he coming to me? You know, they, they were knowing that the man of God was coming. And they knew when the man of God came, he had a word. And that word was going to be life-changing, life-altering, and that they were, they were going to have to have an action. Because when the word comes today to you in this room, you need to take action. Right? If you sit here all day and you are just a, a spectator and not a participator, then all you're going to get today is a good meal and good fun, but you haven't grown and you're certainly not going to amplify. Right? So Elisha encounters the man of God, and the man of God does something so strange, and I won't take my clothes off today like I've done when I have spoke, spoke this before where I took off my jacket. But he takes off his mantle, and he comes by Elisha. Elisha is minding his own business. This, this boy is out there plowing the field. He's got his yoke of oxen. He's got his daddy's business. He is doing fine. He is doing great. And then the man of God comes by. And that was opportunity, and it was calling. And so when he comes by, he takes his mantle off from around him, the prophet did, and he put it on Elisha, and then he just strolled off. He just kept walking. And Elisha had a choice right then because they knew that when the man of God came and the mantle was put upon someone, that there was an opportunity and it was an invitation to go higher. So many times we want to talk about going forward. We want to talk about, oh, we're going to go in 2024 and we're going to move forward in our life. Let me tell you a little bit about going forward. I'm going to go forward a minute. I'm going forward. I'm not going backwards. I'm still going forward. I'm going forward. Yep, still going forward. You notice anything? Cycles, patterns. Oh, I'm going to do better. Oh, I'm going to do bigger things this year. I'm going to go forward. But I got a call of action today that's different than the forward motion. It's called amplify. It's called leveling up. God is calling you today in this house, and I believe he's calling me to level up, to level up. So I'm going to flip over. We're going to jump a little bit. We're going to go to the book of Revelation. Chapter 4. Again, trying to resist the readers. Let's see how this goes. See how I'll step back. See that? It's, it's a technique I wanted to teach somebody who's going to need it later. Yeah, okay. Okay, Revelation chapter 1, it says, After these things, I looked, and behold a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. Verse 2, Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and one set on the throne. And he who sat there was like a jasper and sardis stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. There was a call to come up here, to come up higher. And if you notice in the language, it says, come up here, and then it says, behold. That means he saw something greater. He saw something worthy to go up higher. 
And there was no question about it because in the next verse, in verse 2, immediately. So many times we sat in the valley of decision and we sat there too long. Some of you have been in decision valley for so long that you've set up housekeeping and you've got, you, you've even got storage sheds. It's time. It's time to make a decision. It's time to level up. In all your seeking, well, you've asked. You've done the things, right? Matthew chapter 6, you've asked, you've seeked, and you've knocked. And the door's open. But will you come up here and go up higher? Will we? You say, how am I going to do that? Somebody's done, gone on before you. See, there are people who have been where you want to be, but you can't sit back and only be a spectator. You've got to become a servant, and you've got to follow the lead, and you've got to be teachable. You've got to be able to be another, here's a big word, you've got to be unoffendable. You've got to be willing to take the hard, constructive criticism without getting hard. You've got to be willing to listen intently and to follow the lead of someone who has got your best interest at heart. And so Elijah and Elisha developed a relationship because Elisha decided that he had something that had to be sacrificed in order to go forward. Back into the scripture, it said he immediately took and he said, I want to go back to my parents. I want to go kiss them goodbye. But did you hear, him say, hear anything about that anymore? After Elijah said, you need to think about what I just did. That's another translation. You need to think about what has just been offered to you. The mantle has been put on you. That is a call of God. It is a mandate for you to go higher. And so what he did is he decided to turn back. But when he turned back, what he did is he went back to go take care of things that would have hindered him and called him back. So he took the oxen and he slaughtered them and he took the plow and used it for firewood and he cooked that joker, those jokers. There was a lot of jokers. He cooked what was his provision and dis dispersed it and stewarded well what God had done in a former season. But what he did was he knew that he had to get rid of that in order to go with Elijah. Because so many times you're in the valley of decision too long. And we got this backup plan. Let me make it personal. It's no secret if you're looking at me for 10 seconds and you're a hairstylist that you know I'm a hairstylist, right? I mean, you know, we do red hair, blue hair, whatever hair, <laughs> something. Okay, because there was some, uh, there was a hairstylist in the room. Where was my hairstylist? There she is, yes. Yesterday, we're in the bathroom and she's looking at me and I already spotted her. She came in and I was like, that girl's a hairstylist. <laughs> I knew it, we can spot each other. Okay, I've been a hairstylist for many, many years. Very grateful for the, the skill set, for the time that I spent there. But there was a day that God said to me, I was into my career, had a great salon, making great money. Talk about those digits that Pastor Yo was talking about, making some good money. I was what I wanted to be. I was the best hairstylist in my community. And I'm not saying that just braggadocious because it, I was meaning to be, right? I pursued it. I was going to do whatever I did with excellence, and I was going to do it to the glory of God, and I did. I ministered to a lot of people who sat in my chair. One day I was sitting in my salon, and I distinctly remember the day. I was sitting there in the quiet, and I was having a moment of gratitude. I was thanking God. I was like, thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you, God, for all these people that trust me. 
and for this business that's doing so well. And I was just having a moment. And you know what the Lord had the nerve to say to me? (laughs) He had the nerve to say to me, he said, but would you give it up? Listen, I said, yes, sir. I didn't give it up that day because he didn't ask me to. He asked me, would I? And I said, yes, I would. And I listened to see if it was the time, and it wasn't. But he was preparing me. He was like Elijah, and he had taken the mantle, and he had thrown it over me. And I had a choice now to become a servant. And I started being a disciple, a learner. I began to learn the word. I I dug deep because I knew the call of God was there. I knew what he had called me to. And so it was years later, I was still pursuing in my career. God was gracing me in that. I became an instructor. I got a job, I, uh, num- numerous jobs that I didn't apply for, but I was asked to come in and to help the, the beauty school. I have uh, numerous students that I've had the opportunity to pray with. I had a young lady. Uh, I'd been witnessing to them in the way that you, you can when you're in a state school, but they knew what they got when they got me, right? Y'all know what y'all signed up for when y'all got me here today right? And I remember this young lady that day, she was like, I need to talk to you. And and she said, because she was in Wicca, she was in witchcraft, and she was doing all the things, you know, and, and I'd been talking to her about it. And um, I said, you know what, if you'll come after class, we'll have a conversation. She said, okay. So after class that day, this young lady, she comes into my office, and it's after hours, and she sits in there, and I told her the truth about the darkness that she was in, because white witchcraft is a lie from the dark devil, right? And I talked to her, and I shared the truth with her, and I shared with her what she was looking for was the gifts and callings that were in her were getting fed by the wrong satellite signal. And so I asked her and gave her an opportunity that day to receive Jesus, but she had to denounce that in order to move forward. She had a decision moment. She she had a choice to level up. She had a choice to move up. And that day she did. And so she denounced Wicca, and that's just one of the many beautiful stories that I'm so grateful for. So it seems like, oh, well, that's great. Why would you leave that? But, you know, when the assignment was over and and it was time for me to move on, I had to make a choice to follow God's lead and lead something that may appear blessed, good, and lucrative. Because everything good is not always God. Right? It's not always God's assignment. And so I made a choice that day in that classroom that God... This is what I'm doing, but if you still want me to move into ministry, I will. Had great opportunities, still pursuing in the career, but I had to walk away in order to level up to do what God had called me to do. That's each of us. It's each of us, right? Each of us distinctly, God has got something that has been just down inside of your gut. You just know that I am meant and made for this. Amen. And your this doesn't have to look like mine, and mine doesn't have to look like yours. Because each of us is a part of, of a beautiful body of believers. We have our place. We have our space. And God will anoint you for that. But when we're discontented, oftentimes it's because God is calling us to a higher place, but we are still hanging on to the ox, and we're still hanging on to the plow. Right? Some of us in here today, your call to amplify and your call to action is that some of you have some oxen that need slaughtered and some plows that need to be burned in order for you to come up higher, right? All right. So let me head on over. I want to read this scripture to you in Matthew, and it's 
not interesting, it's God, how he wants to drive a point home because Pastor Yolanda used this exact uh, scripture today. In Matthew chapter 6, and, and I'm going to try to find the verse. <laughs> Are y'all making fun of me? I just want to know. Are you joining me? 23? Anyways, it's near to the last verse in the book of Matthew. <laughs> All right? Okay. Does it help if we're real? It does, doesn't it? Amen. Yeah, because the fact of the matter, God likes you like you are. Amen. He does. He really enjoys your personality. He enjoys the little quirks and the little idiosyncrasies about you, and he will take those and make those so beautiful to bring him glory, right? Amen. All right. It says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you, period. 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 But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be added to you. It, that preaches all on its own, right? Because so much of our seeking is seeking after what we feel fits us best. We're trying to get smarter. We're trying to, to gain more clout, more money, more notoriety, more fan base, more social media followers, et cetera, et cetera. All of those things, God knows what you have need of. He knows where you need to be, and he knows how to get you there. But putting first things first will get things in alignment, and when you come into alignment then God's going to get you in the right vehicle to get you to the assignment that you're called for. But in the seeking, we get lost in seeking. We get lost in the pursuit, and we start pursuing the wrong thing whenever if we just seek him, He's going to bring it all in. But you have to seek his kingdom. You've got to seek that your message should line up with his message. You've got to seek righteousness. What is righteousness? Righteousness is right standing with God. Righteousness is living a lifestyle conducive for the Holy Spirit to move in your life. Right standing with God happens when you receive the Lord Jesus, but whenever you receive him, you've got to engage with the master. You've got to get involved with relationship. You've got to start leaning in to hear what he is saying to you so that you may be transformed by the renewing of your mind and get into the word and let that word begin to form in you a right heart before God. And when your heart gets right before God and you start leaning into him, he's going to teach you, he's going to lead you, and he's going to fill you, and he's going to fulfill you. You're, you're going to feel the purpose come and chase you down. Right? Blessings are going to come looking after you. They're going to be chasing you. I'm not going to have to seek to be blessed. All of a sudden, I'm going to turn around and I'll be like, what, the, what just hit me? That was the blessings of the Lord that done chased me down. Some of you need some blessings in your life and you need them to be chasing you down. But you're running from, right? You've got to run whenever you're not running in the right lane. Right? You've got to run in the lane of righteousness if you want the righteous blessings of the Lord. Elijah had to, to uh, take the lead, but Elisha had to follow the lead. Elijah on the journey was, hey, bud, why don't you just stay back here because God's calling me over this direction. And he did that to the, to the boy three times, but he couldn't get rid of him. Elisha was like, no, no, I'm going. You're not getting rid of me. Wherever you go, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be watching what you do. I'm going to be knowing how you do it. I'm going to be seeking after the God of, that Elijah is serving because I see the results in Elijah's life. And he's thinking, if those results are in Elijah's life and I hang out real close to him and I get covered then what's going to happen next is that covering of blessings is going to start flowing in my life. And then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to be a covering for someone else. 
You know, as the word goes on in 2 Kings chapter 2, it says that there were 50 other prophets who stood back and they were watching the whole scene. They were keeping notes. They were watching Elisha following Elijah, but they were spectators, not participators. So when the day came that Elijah was carried off by the uh, chariot of fire, Elisha was the one standing there when the mantle came falling down. And the 50 were still afar off watching. Are you willing to be in the 50 or are you willing to be the one? Are you willing to be the Elisha that says, that ain't getting past me? I ain't a chance that I'm not following after that because I'm going to be on that dude's skirt tail. I'm not leaving wherever you go. That's where I'm going because whenever you go up, I want the glory to come down and I'm not missing it. I'm not missing it. And so immediately when it happened, Elisha gets that mantle because he had a choice. There's some mantles in this room. Let me speak to somebody right now. I feel the spirit of the Lord on that. Mm. There's some mantles in this room. Some of you have family members that have been righteous saints of God. And you're not walking after their, follow, their lead. There's some mantles that's laying, waiting for you to bend down as a servant and to pick it up and to do something with it. The first thing he did is he picked that mantle up and he hit the water and he went across into dry ground. He went from one place to another. Some of you need to cross over. You need to cross over, you need to climb higher, and you need to make a decision to do that today. Today, you're going to have lots of beautiful opportunities in this room to level up, to amplify, to be engaged in the spirit of the Lord, to be empowered by his presence. But you have to say yes. Your yes is going to make a way for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to come ushering in those blessings that are going to chase you down. They're going to have your cup running over. Your cup's going to run over so much that you're going to be splashing on everybody around you. They're going to say, what happened to him? What happened to her? And it's going to be because the blessings of the Lord came. You said yes. You made a decision. You got out of the valley of decision. You quit going in that forward circle of motion. And you saw the opportunity where the door of heaven opened and said, come up here. Come up here. Is that you? Is that you today? I'm going to end this right now. Which is, I'm going to do a quiet, reflective moment. I want everybody just to... Quiet yourself. I, I do this exercise where I, I say I'm going to quiet my soul because my soul is my mind, my will, and my emotions. And when I quiet my soul, then I can begin to let the spirit inside of me speak to Holy Spirit. They can have a conversation. I believe there's a conversation needed to be had in this room. We might as well start this early, right? So let's just close our eyes and let's just have that moment. Holy Spirit, I ask that you speak with visions right now that they're seeing, they're hearing, and they're knowing that you, God, are calling them up higher. You've set forth the invitation. I pray that their answer be today a yes. A yes. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, guys. I'm going to hand this baton over. We're about to have an amazing speaker that's going to step up. You've got a power-packed 
day, but I want to encourage you. If you said the yes, there's an action that needs to happen there. Because I believe faith without action, the word says it, faith without works is got somebody in the house. Let's put it and breathe life into it. Write it down. Share with someone. I want to challenge you. Share with someone today. What was your guess? What was it that the invitation looked like specifically to you? Because he's so personal. He's such a personal God. He loves you so much. Thank you all for listening to me today. And be blessed. And I will be happy to meet most of you in this room today somewhere along the lines of my booth because I get a little social. Right? All right. Well, praise God. Thank you all. Let's give it up for Miss Marlena Hollis.